Hey guys, this is Samad here from DIY King. Well, while working on different useful projects in my workshop, I thought why not we built ourselves an electric fidgeting machine. So in today's project video, we are going to build ourselves the most useless machine of all times by using a triple five timer IC, a DPTT switch, a bunch of MDF sheets and a servo motor. So have a look at the most useless machine of all times. Well, that's pretty much annoying. Now to build one for ourselves, we are going to need a 3mm thick MDF sheet that builds up the structure of this useless machine. I started cutting the required pieces on my table saw that is built by using a cordless circular saw. Well, it helps me to cut the required sizes perfectly, but you can get the same job done by using a hand saw as well. The dimensions of each of these parts is given in the description below, so be sure to check it out. At this point, I started working on the internal mechanism of the useless box. The working is rather simple. As I turn on the toggle switch, we have to switch it off by using a mechanical arm that later retracts inside the box. Now to do so, we are going to need a geared servo motor that offers a good amount of torque and preferably a simple operation as compared to other types. One such kind of servo motor is usually used in remote control airplanes and cars so we are going to use that one. We can operate this servo motor using a 50 Hz pulse width modulation signal. A 50 Hz PWM signal in the range of 1 millisecond to 2 millisecond can make the servo rotate from 0 degree up to 180 degree and vice versa. Here I've used a triple five timer IC in combination with a DPDT toggle switch which not only activates the servo motor as we hit the switch but it also reverses the rotation to retract the arm inside the box by selecting between 1 millisecond to 2 millisecond pulse widths while the arm is being stopped by a limiting switch over there. So I've designed a PCB using this schematic and to order my PCBs I've visited jlcpcb.com. Well, they are the largest PCB manufacturers in China. So all I had to do is to upload the Gerber files for my PCBs and later check out the options that are given below such as PCB quantity, their thickness and the stuff like that. Well, they are offering some great quality PCBs for some pretty cheap prices and for the first order we can get as low as $2 for up to 10 PCBs and that includes the shipment cost right at your doorstep. As always, the PCBs showed up within just a week and this time I tried the yellow colored masking over my PCBs and it looks fine. Well, it's definitely not as attractive as green or red ones, but the quality of the PCB is definitely outstanding as always. Now I started soldering all the necessary components onto the PCB. First off, I placed 8 pin IC socket onto the PCB. Make sure you place it with the notch in correct direction as shown on the PCB. Likewise, a similar notch is given on the triple five timer IC as well. Up next, I started placing the complementary components which includes one N4148 diode and a bunch of resistors. Just ensure their values using a multimeter before placing them onto the PCB. While dealing with a handful of complementary components, I have mistakenly placed a 100 microfarad capacitor instead of a 100 picofarad one which I have replaced later in the video. 
Here I have used a double pole double transit switch which reverses the direction of servo motor causing the servo arm to retract inside the box. I have used a PCB connector to connect the power from the battery pack to the driver board. To connect the servo motor, I have used some male headers, while I have also used an LED light to indicate the working of the machine. Now to stop the retracting servo arm, I have used a limit switch. I have used normally close contacts so that when the arm hits the limit switch, it switches off the servo motor eventually stopping it. To recharge the battery pack, I have also added a 5mm input jack. As the jack is mounted at the rear side of the box, so I have extended a pair of wires from the PCB back to the jack. Moreover, I have also replaced the misplaced capacitor with the correct one. Now with that being done, our circuit is ready to be mounted on the top half plate of the box. The servo motor is mounted just beneath the driver board. Here I'm using a Hi-Tech 485 HB servo motor that is usually used in remote control airplanes or cars. I have also made a customized arm for the servo motor that can reach up to the toggle switch using a thicker sheet of MDF. Later on, I glued the limit switch to set the end point of the servo arm, connected the servo to the PCB and I started gluing the box. I have also added rubber o-rings on the base which prevents the box from sliding on the surface while operating. This useless machine is powered by a lithium polymer cell that I have got from an old laptop battery. The cell is then glued to the base of the box and connected to the male side of the PCB connector through a switch which then goes to the female side of the connector onto the PCB. Later I connected the charging jack to the PCB and mounted the top plate using some cut screws. While the other half of the top plate is mounted onto the box using some fiberglass tape. Now with that being done, 
our useless machine is ready to waste our time. <laughs> So guys, if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Moreover, have a look at some of my other projects as well. And for more upcoming and exciting projects, do subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link just given over here. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you soon in the next one.